to adapt to the elements that in Australia are rather wild, unpredictable, unruly, and at times catastrophic, requires uh, an acceptance of suffering. And that's not something that uh, you know our egos like. Our egos like to triumph over suffering. I mean, a lot of us go to great lengths to protect ourselves from suffering. And in Australia, that often means protecting ourselves from the elements that mm. cause so much suffering. See, we came here with a, <coughs> with a European mind that, that is a controlling mind. How can we control nature? How can we make it work for us? How can we make a profit from the land, from farming, from industry, from mining? All these, you might say, are from the heroic point of view. Australia, however, doesn't work that way. You know, it's not a heroic country. Um, it's a country where nature is the key player. It's not just the background of human affairs. It's in the foreground, and it's going to stay like that. I mean, so much of Australia you can't cultivate. You can't turn it into farms and gardens and houses and real estate. A large part of Australia is beyond that. And so we have to develop, if you like, a spirituality, a way of living with the land that acknowledges the land as the primal entity. It's not just the background to our human lives, it's actually in the foreground. I mean, I can't help but think of it when you're here. It's just, um, it's devastating what's happened. The, the interesting big. thing was, though, that they were, I mean, they were obviously of roadkill, but the, they were still, you had to look for the roadkill in the painting. Yes. I mean, you could have looked at that painting and thought, gee, that's a beautiful painting. Look, that's right. Beautiful colour. Well, yeah. she said to me that they, she wasn't happy with... Um, I think she... They didn't, she didn't sell anything at the opening. Or, no. They'd been, they'd been there for a while. And maybe it was about a couple of months beforehand she decided right. to take them. But, you know, I have to respect Angela for that, though, that she never yeah. compromised on... Yeah. I mean, she... She had a subject matter and she just kept going with it and right. didn't care if it sold or not. And they were beautiful paintings. They were beautiful paintings. Yeah. Which is a contrast to the subject. I mean, it's crazy, yeah. really. Her paintings were very much about um, the sort of human interaction with the, everything around us, you know, the, every yeah. living thing, the trees, and the animals, and yes. uh, yeah. but the, also um, the, the earth itself. And her cut, that's why she diffused her, a lot of her colours, don't I thought? Yes, yeah. And blended them into yeah. trees and, and soil and so forth. He directed one of my poems. Mm. That was called The Bridal Suite. And that was at La Mama in 1979. He worked for six weeks on that rehearsal. That's the only time that he directed one of my plays. The opening night audience didn't know where they were. It wasn't a financial thing, it's the atmosphere that he had. And it ends with her not knowing whether she's going to leave that hut or not. There's a thunderstorm, which on opening night there really was. There was a thunderstorm at La Mama. It was so oppressively hot, that Easter weather. And then the rain, the rain beat down on the tin roof of La Mama, and the audience are oh, all sighing from the rain. And then the doors blew open at La Mama, you know, the double doors. Mm -hmm. And you got fanned by all that cool wind and the um, bridal veil fluttering like that, like a mad bird. And you don't know whether she's going to leave the hut or stay there. And Reg dragged that out with her fiddling with her gloves, whether she's going to take them off or leave them on. And he just kept that tension, the light pulled right into the gloves. And the audience are thinking, come on, leave this awful place. Maybe you should stay, maybe you should leave. It's an interesting um, point about staying or leaving. I know, I know. But the irony isn't lost on me. Sometimes you're writing about things 30 years before they happen.
rock you here in the cradle. You know, this villain may take our house, but he'll never take our cradle. <laughs> Yeah.